data set that we have represents a sample of 30 days of prior to live traffic data where each line corresponds to one impression that was displayed to a user and for each banner that we displayed we have a detailed information about its context if it was clicked if it led to a conversion and if it led to a conversion that was attributed to criteria or not so here we have a data that has been subsampled and anonymized so as not disclose any proprietary elements and these are the various attributes for that data so important attributes include the timestamp the unique user identifier the conversion timestamp the conversion id the number of clicks the click position and so on so what is attribution modeling attribution modeling is basically a framework for analyzing which touch points or marketing channels receive credit for a conversion each attribution model distributes the value of a conversion across each touch point differently a model comparison tool allows us to analyze how each of those different attrib attribution models perform over here, we have made use of six attribution models, the last third attribution, the first third attribution, linear attribution, time decay, U-shaped and logistic regression. Moving on to the last touch attribution, the last third attribution model gives 100% of the credit for a conversion to the last click or visit that happened in a conversion path. If there was no click or visit, then it will credit the last impression. These are the screenshots of the Jupyter notebook that we have created. Yeah, we start with first installing the Keras, then importing the required libraries. Then we read the criteria data set as a data frame. We take a sample of 400 campaigns to do the attribution modeling, create a pay column from the timestamp column, create a journey ID from the user ID and the conversion ID. Then we normalize the timestamps, create some additional derived columns. Then we create a function to return a subset of the uh, sampled campaigns. These are some of the data pre-processing steps that has been applied. Let me display a structure of the data set a function to balance the data so that the data driven models like logistic regression can be trained over here. Then we, then we one hot encode the category and the campaign columns. Going further down, we then display the journey length for each, uh, for each uh, campaign and then we uh, we display the journey length for all the journeys which which got converted. This is, this is the function that has been defined for the last attribution model. So over here we use this function where the max function grabs the last uh, occasion whether where the touch point was made using this time uh, the normalized timestamp value. Then you plot a graph to visualize the attribution scores where we have the campaign ID versus the number of returns per impression. Over here, we have the LTA attribution weights. Then move to the first attribution model, where first attribution model gives all the credit to the first touch point in the journey. So here we create a function for the first third attribution model, where this the minimum function grabs the first uh, first occurrence of the touch point, where the weight which led to the conversion. Then we plot a graph to visualize the attribution scores where we have the return per impression on the y-axis and the campaign ID on the x-axis. The FTA refers to the uh, FTA stores the attribution weights for the first touch attribution models. Then we move to the linear attribution model. So the linear attribution gives equal credits to all the touch points in the journey. It's the same. It's it's more on the it's the same function, but over here we have a, a linear column where we divide the conversion column with the number of clicks column. Uh, to uh, to get the to to give equal attributes to all the touch points during the journey, and then we plot a graph to display the attribution scores where we have the returns per impression on the y-axis and the campaign ID on the x-axis, and then again the linear attribution weights for the model. Then move to the U-shaped attribution model, which gives most of the credits to the first and the last touch points, and some credit to the intermediate touch points. The U-shaped attribution model over here, we have our uh, extreme touch attribution, which gets a score of 0.4. The intermediate touch attribution gets a score of 0.20. The default attribution score is 0.5. Then we plot a graph to visualize these attribution scores for each of the campaign ID. Then move to the time decay attribution model, where time decay attribution model gives equal credit to the touch points that are closer in time to conversion. Formula used here over is this, where we have a half-life equal to 7. 
we then create a function for the time decay attribution model where we calculate the attribution score based on this function and then we plot a graph to visualize the attribution scores based for each campaign id and this is the time decay attribution weights associated with it we then store each of these attribution weights and use it later to plot our graphs then move to the logistic regression where we perform the same data pre-processing steps that we performed earlier and then we we prepare the features for logistic regression we then uh, import the train test fit to split the data to training and test sets we then import the logistic regression model and then fit it to the training data and then evaluate it against the testing data and we get a score of 0.87 we then train a model over 10 epochs and test the score and test its accuracy to further improve our score and accuracy we then train a model over 20 epochs and we get a test score of about 0.366 and a test accuracy of about 85.46 percent we then plot the visualization of all these attribution scores for each campaign id and its return per impression these are the logistic regression weights associated with it and then we save it as a text file for budget optimization and roi we make use of these ways initially we perform the all the data pre-processing steps again on the data set and then we make use of the ways that we have created earlier we then plot a graph to visualize the attribution or the contribution for each campaign by the respective models so here we have plotted around six at uh, the six uh, models and their respective campaign id and the attribution scores for budget optimization and the return of investment uh, the key assumption here is that if one of the campaigns in a journey runs out of budget then the conversion reward is fully lost for the entire journey including both the past and the future campaigns so here we evaluate the rewards for different values of pitch then we plot the best models uh, that are running for different values of the pitch so here we have pitch values of point ranging from 0 to 3 and over here we we plot the uh, we plot the pitch on the x axis and the reward on the y axis for all of the models and we see that the time decay model has a high value of uh, of around 6 greater than 1600 at a pitch value of about 0.2 So here we have a dashboard that we have created using Google Studio. I'll move on to that. Over here we have a report where we have pitch versus ROI for different attribution models. So as you can see, the maximum value for a pitch of 0.2, we get a reward of around 1618 for time decay algorithm attribution modeling. So we can see the time decay performs better over here. And, and over here we have a tabulated representation of different values of pitch and the return of investments for the different attribution models the conclusion so by referring to the above simulation graphs and dashboards we find out the return of investment for different values of pitch and the the, the roi turns out to be maximum for the time decay algorithm with a pitch value of 0.2 the value of pitch is very important as it can be a hyper as it can be used as a hyper parameter and we can find the most efficient range for that pitch value Values in the range of 0 to 1 can be used as it is more stable.